let's get stuck into another assessment of an Azure Pass service in terms of regional failover when we're using private link and private endpoints. This time we're going to turn our attention to Azure database for Postgres. The first thing to call out here would be there's different types of implementation when it comes to Postgres. Now I won't belabor this point, but fundamentally there's the single server model and the flexible server model and check out the Azure documentation on when you should use each option. The flexible server option uses a model of VNet integration, wherein the underlying nodes get injected into your VNet, so they inherently get IP addresses. The single server model runs on fundamentally nodes that live outside of your VNet. And as we've learned in the past, in that latter model, is where private link is used to bridge the gap from inside of your VNet with a private endpoint NIC to outside of your VNet. If you want to learn more about the fundamental split and dichotomy between these two different types of private network or PaaS services on Azure, go to aka.ms forward slash why private link. You will find this white paper written by Federico Garini which talks about VNet injection versus private link and also compares and contrasts with VNet service endpoints. Okay, so we know we're talking about single server for Postgres. Let's go a bit deeper. So I've deployed a primary Postgres server inside of my West US region here. At the moment, I haven't turned on private link. So let's just explain how failover works when it comes to Postgres and not using private link because it's very important to understand uh, the expectations here on the user when it comes to failover. So you have to deploy a certain type of SKU. You have to use the general purpose SKU to enable um, what's called read replicas in Postgres. So if I've got a Postgres server here, my primary one, on the left here, you've got an option for replication. And this is where you can add the concept of a replica. So your data will be replicated to that server. And you can write to this server, but you can't write to the red server in this example. But you can read from the red server. And the documentation on read replicas stipulates some example use cases for that. So I've been through the documentation on creating my read replica. I've added that second server in East US. And we have replication that is active, we can see the replica is shown as East US. If you want to learn more about read replicas, then check out the links below. You have to be careful in terms of the regions. You can always replicate to a paired region, East US and West US in my example. But there are some universal regions where you can replicate your data to if you want to go above and beyond the paired region or use some non-paired regions for replication. Okay, let's think about a normal failover scenario. I've got my virtual machine and it's making some sort of API call or using a connection string pointing at my Postgres server in West US. Specifically for me, that will be going to postgres-westus.postgres.database.azure.com. That's the string that I've been assigned to my Postgres server. We can see that here on the overview tab. And if we look in public DNS, we can see that there's a C name here that happens pointing it at a stamp inside of the West US region. Okay, so under normal conditions, I'm writing direct to this server. So we should ask what would happen if the region fails? Okay, so my, my compute logic fails over to this region and I want to continue using my database. Well, this is where we need to understand the requirement for the user to change the connection string. Because if you keep using this connection string here, which you have always been using, Postgres hyphen West US, that is not going to work when the region goes down. If this region goes down, this server here doesn't automatically inherit the same connection string that you've been using before. In fact, this server 
my East US server has a different connection string, Postgres hyphen East US. So it's your responsibility to update your logic to start using this replica here. And the documentation captures this. So failing over to a replica, if the primary server fails, which would happen in a region down scenario, it is not automatically failed over. So we have to do that. And point two here says you need to point your application at what used to be your former replica. So you, you have to promote this red server and update your application logic. This is very different, therefore, to some of the other services that we reviewed in the past, such as Azure SQL Server with failover groups, where the alias takes care of that for you, um, such as Service Bus, which again uses aliases, such as Azure Storage, where we do that swing inside of public DNS. You can keep using that initial FQDN. The takeaway here with Postgres is that you will have to change your application logic so what impact does that have on us if we're using private endpoints? Well, let's update our diagram to show how that would look. Okay, I've enabled private link now on both of my Postgres servers in both regions. So we can see that in the portal. If I go to the West US one, private endpoint connections, I see I've got a private endpoint deployed here. Got uh, the IP address 4.7. I've done the same thing in East US, which is got the IP address on 7216.1.5. So they're both private endpoints are enabled, one private endpoint in each region. This private endpoint points to this one. And this private endpoint points to this one. I've also deployed a single common global Azure DNS private zone for private link.postgres.database.azure.com. And you see here inside of my record sets, I've got two A records pointing to fundamentally different names, one for East US, one for West US, and they both give back the local private endpoints. So in this configuration here, we can see also that if we go to my public dig, and I you know, notice this was before, if I redig that FQDN, you'll see that for the, the primary now, I've got that private link insertion. So this is kind of all irrelevant now, because as we said before, you are as the user responsible for swinging over your application connection string. So we'll just replay what would happen in a, a DR event with private link here. So under normal conditions, you're using this connection string here. You're coming from a linked VNet, you're getting back your 4.7. So your VM goes to private DNS, gets back the private endpoint locally and connects to your primary replica. That region has a complete failure and you start leveraging the logic in your backup site. Your compute that you're using, you update the connection string, point to Postgres hyphen East US. At that point, your virtual machine, which is linked to the same global zone, which is still available because it's a global resource, gets back this IP address 1.5. It connects to a local private endpoint, which then starts making use of the replica that you've promoted and you're now using. So two main takeaways for Postgres. One is, yes, it will work with a, a single global zone because fundamentally you're never making use of the same FQDN, uh, but the implication of that is you as the user are responsible for making that change in a DR event. Okay, I hope you found it useful. If you need to look at private link multi-region, for any other services, check out the other 10 or so videos that exist on the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.